For the Endeavour spaceship, um, there are a lot of uh, wonderful images that already exist, uh, thank God, and we were fortunate enough to get a uh, mock-up that had been done that was uh, just sitting all by itself, lonely, waiting for somebody to take it to Montreal, and we altered it to make it uh, camera-friendly and uh, embellished it and wired it up, and um, that's what we based uh, the Endeavour on, on the Endeavour. Um, the other uh, spaceships were uh, set designs that took months and months of study and uh, building components and then deciding which type of um, bells and whistles went into that to create a really fantastic looking ship. What we did first was d discuss the characters and um, try to figure out who they are and then we assigned a color palette to each of them. Um, that would be a subtle introduction into their sets. Uh, which we did. Then we talked about different types of lighting for different types of set to give it a different look. Halle Berry, we were uh, in the golden earthy tones. And um, then we went to uh, earth tones with green for Brian and Casey was in blue. We signed it blue because he was always wanting to go to space and that was his world. And Brian was very grounded and stuck on earth. We uh, were fortunate enough to have somebody on board at NASA who uh, was available to answer any questions that we had about any details and we were also given uh, permission to use their beautiful library of images which uh, was very helpful on the show. We wanted to know what each person, what their responsibility was in that room to make sure that it was as authentic as, po as possible. When we first started this project, um, we had many chosen locations um, and after uh, we were shut down because of the pandemic, certain locations were no longer available to us and so we quickly um, started designing and building sets in studio, uh, some that were very ambitious for the time frame that we had but there is an excellent team here that just made it all happen. Uh, the majority of uh, the movie was shot in, in, in studio. There was uh, amazing designs, um, a brilliant uh, team of art directors and set designers that uh, created the spaces that did look authentic and real so that uh, we could bring, bring in our dressing and um, make it a whole world. The Griffith Observatory, which is the most spectacular Art Deco building, um, was a bit of a challenge and we were slotted to um, do some of this on location and it became obvious a uh, little later than we hoped that we would not be going there, so away we built and it was um, a bit of a challenge uh, to find all of the necessary pieces for an exhibit. Um, we did build uh, some wonderful pieces, as you can see right behind me there. Um, and it did look beautiful. It was a huge scale set um, that was on an empty lot. Everything was built, the runway, the streets, all of the buildings. Um, what made it uh, authentically Los Angeles uh, were palm trees, which is key. Um, also the great detail to the street dressing and the graphics that we find on all of the buildings. And uh, the, the destruction was quite something because what we like to do is dress the set as it would be and then go in and destroy it ourselves so that things fall where they would naturally fall. So it's not about throwing uh, a bunch of destruction all over the place. You start with the real thing and then you destroy it. Well, there were a couple of um, epic uh, destruction scenes, what you just mentioned, the LA streets. There's also a ho hotel set that we started off in its pristine condition and um, uh, with special effects, destroyed it and then reset it and then destroyed it again <laughs> and again. Well, there was a great special effects team and uh, we had doubles and triples and uh, dried some stuff out uh, when we had a few days to and, and reset it. 
it's a lot of coordination between us and special effects and it worked out very well. It's a magical place. It's really beautiful from the hand-painted backdrops in there, um, the set designers, the construction, all the sculpting that went on for months, the painters, uh, the greens team, and finally the layer of snow that really gives it this, uh, this beautiful magic. I did not have a great amount of decorating to do in that set actually. We're just adding in um, some exterior pieces and then there was the Aspen house. I have many favorite sets. Um, the latest one I think would have been the Aspen fire station just because the level of detail that went into that set was just uh, spectacular. And then we destroyed it. Even though it's an empty abandoned fire station, it had a life of its own before all of this uh, catastrophe took place. It was really great that there are a lot of existing images um, for this set. Um, of course, we, we built uh, the majority of the consoles in there because that's not something that you can, you can readily find. And um, there's a lot of great visuals in there, also from uh, NASA images that we were provided with. I would say that it's been a really challenging experience to work on a role in film. Um, it's been epic. Um, there was a lot of uh, shared ideas between us. A uh, little bit difficult during the pandemic. Everybody in masks or on Zoom meetings, so you don't have the, you know, the direct contact that you normally would. Um, there was uh, improvisations. Um, on every set, I, I would uh, dub it the morning marathon, where, you know, I saw Roland walk, walk in and it was set lighting actors and we made changes and every time that we made, we made changes or subtle adjustments, it was perfect and you could see it, you know, so he has a great eye and um, it was a fun marathon.